Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. We have a tidy up, the September calendar, a Q&A, a little mail call, and a few other things. <laughs> Let's do the tidy up. So your tidy up assignment for today is to find one project bin, like a bin or a stack or a box or a bag, whatever, you're working on a project. And for that project, you're finished with some of the parts. Maybe you're finished with the whole project. Then it's like, good, like, let's put it away. Let's re, you know, resort what's in there. You might have used some of the stuff and there's, and, and you're done with it. And that's where I am with Midnight Moon. So, you know, I've been showing you the bin that I've, I've kept these things in. Now I've already, I've cut all of the white sashings, all of the sashings for both the medium and the large blocks are cut. Here are the medium and over here are the large. So I have both of these cut now, all the sashings. So I don't need the white fabrics anymore. Um, you know, I did have to go in and recut one piece of fabric. So you're, there is an argument to say, well, I could just leave them out until I finish sewing the blocks. But I think what I'm going to do is put them away. So I'll just take this handful. If I need to find them, I know where they are. I'm going to put them just in that bin, this one. They're going to go in here. So I'll be able to find them if I need them. And I'll probably just put them together rather than sorting them somehow. And that will be done. And there's one or two little pieces in there. Those will go into the scrap bin. So that is my tidy up. And I'm moving along. They're all cut. So it means in the evening I can sew. When it's later I can sew. And I'm doing the medium ones right now. Oh, there's my start and stop for the on that whole strand of them that I did. <laughs> so I've got one, I've got, oh, I'm on the, th I'm on the third side. I've done like half of them for the third side. Then there's just the fourth side. These are the large ones. And then I'll do the, the medium and then I can set it. But I see the end is near for midnight moon, which is good. So, um, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. If I just keep moving and don't get stalled, it'll work out. Okay. So today is beach day. So, you know, there are tons of days that are celebrated every day of the year and beach day is today. And I, what have I got? I'm looking for. Okay. So I have got the binding fabric. I showed you this the other day. I've got the dots now, and I'm still think I'm going to go with the dots because they just do look really good to me because it pulls out and it's, you know, and it's going to be tinier than what you see there. You know, the binding is very small, but it pulls out the black dots that I used within the quilt. So there we go, see? And I have the hanging sleeve because this will hang on a curtain rod in my living room so I can enjoy it. So that is good. All right, I have a few fun, fun mail things. I wanna do the mail things first because <laughs> they're fun. Okay, so first up is Ronnie from Canada. She sent me some wonderful things. First, look at this sunflower. Oh, look at the card, isn't that beautiful? Now she also sent me some salvages which have unicorns on them. Oh, have to love that. The rainbow and then actually here is part of the unicorn, a unicorn leg that can go in my red zinger, right? She sent me some teal squares to do the uh, teal, teal and uh, off-white quilt. And wait, there's more. She sent me some coffee fabric. Look at this. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Wow, it's a nice big piece. It's just beautiful. Look at that. I love it. And a yummy, yummy Starbucks card. So, <laughs> thank you, Ronnie. Mwah. Okay, I have to show you another mail call, which I bought myself. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just do that. And it's maybe kind of silly Mr. Greg wasn't too sure about it, but he probably will enjoy it after I bake it. Yeah. So there was an, I, I'm on the Duncan Hines, you know, cake mix emails. I got on there. I don't know why something, something was something triggered my interest in uh, seeing what they sent. They don't send very many emails. And I got this email saying there was going to be a Dolly Parton box of her cake mix and icings and like a tea towel and stuff and a little note from Dolly. I'm sure it's personalized just to me, <laughs> written just for me. Uh, so I thought, oh my gosh, that's so fun. So you had to sign up 
and then they sent an email when it came in they did like an early release so you could you know to a group of people that you could you know order and I got it and I went right away and I bought it and so my dolly box arrived like how fun is that to get a dolly box so I'm going to open it and show you what's in the dolly box <laughs> and I'm sure you can get all this at your grocery store the um, the, the cake mixes now so you'll see them so here's the dolly box it's cute and look on the side look on the side hello there cupcake <laughs> I love it she is such an amazing woman and had to endure a lot of kind of snarky things in her life hasn't she she's uh, you know has a style and not everybody has been kind to her about that style which I think is just awful so you should do you dolly and she does she's very gracious uh, yeah so anyway let's take a look here is the box baking collection <clears throat> that may be why I first started getting the Duncan Hines was because I wanted to find out what the cake mixes were and my grocery store didn't have them when it first came out so then they did the box here <gasps> so cute little pink little pink uh, stuffing in there so here is my note from Dolly. That's the note from Dolly. Isn't that nice? I'm sure it's written just for me. And then there's a coconut cupcakes, the coconut cake, and the banana pudding cake. So these are recipe cards that I can keep. I can, they're probably on the back of the box too, but it's kind of nice to have the card. And then what's in the box for the, the food part. So they're cake mixes and uh, I just think they're gonna be so fun so fun coconut I love coconut cake I'm gonna have to get some coconut to sprinkle on the icing and this is banana ah oh, yum 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 and then she has icings banana no creamy buttercream and creamy chocolate so there we go and then there were some tea towels you are what you eat and then wine then if you are what you eat then why not be sweet so super cute and a yeah there we go so that is my sort of fun I don't think I've ever ordered a box like this before <laughs> so you know you just have to have fun sometimes just do it and I did I did it's a heavy box too. cake mixes and icing things these 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 are heavy 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 I want to show you a few other things I have a test block of the support club look how cute should I model it <laughs> so remember this is something we're doing in October for breast cancer awareness and there is a pattern um, ugh. so there is a well there's needle minder a quilt pattern and a cross stitch pattern so you want to be sure if you want to sew along and do these that you um, join it'll be once a week we do the support club but I just had to show you the, the block this is in my promise me fabric doesn't that they're like Victoria's Secrets support <laughs> all the fancy roses from the promise me line yeah fun that is fun so we have the September calendar we the world we so you can download the September calendar remember it is two pages you have the calendar itself and then on the second page lists what's going on so for September we add a few projects we have the next block Wednesday starting on um, the first Wednesday in September we have uh, the jelly roll day which is September 17th promise me starts for the two different projects and there will be the red zinger which is using the salvages where did I put those yeah so this is the red zinger will start and making blocks so that should be really fun and the the mystery uh, the Christmas time mystery from the fat quarter shop will start mid month somewhere so I did put it on here but I don't know what date they're gonna start and what day of the week it will be so it'll that'll shift you can just adjust your uh, calendar later when you get that so lots of fun fun uh, days to celebrate in September now I also decided to just roll forward my August September bindings because I don't know if I'll get this binding on by the end of this month which would be Wednesday night uh, if I do then I made one 
if not, I will do it really soon. I will make that a priority. So I'm just rolling mine forward on that business. Okay, let's do a little q and A. I have uh, a couple. So the first one is Stephanie asked, can uh, we get wide backs bigger than what they what they're sold in the quilt shop, like a hundred and twenty somewhere she was that she saw muslin at a hundred and twenty wide back, which is big. Those are big quilts if you need a hundred and twenty uh, width. And so I wrote to um, the president of Benertex, David, and I wrote David and I said, you know, you know, what is the deal with the 120? You know, is that readily available or, you know, why don't people do it or can you do it? And he said, basically, it is a machinery issue is that right now the machinery can only go um, so big. And so that's what they do, and they can't do 120. The machines that are used in the factories where Benertex and probably most other quilting fabric is made are not, are not set up for that. They can't do that wide of a fabric. So apparently somewhere they're doing muslin that way, um, and which means that it is a potential, but businesses have to decide, do they want to tool up with new equipment uh, and have, you know, add newer equipment? Is there a big enough uh, demand for it? And so, you know, probably not. So I would say you probably are not going to see 120 wide backs, but you never know, you never know. Anything can happen, right? <laughs> I'm going to do another one on some of the terminology in the pattern. So hold on, let me get a pattern here a second. So Laura asked, uh, could I explain the, the sizing of a block? When a pattern tells you the size of a block and what the finish size will be. So in my patterns that I write, these little ones that you print the PDFs, uh, are used for like Block Wednesday and other sew alongs, like this is a bonus block from the Table Topper. Many years ago, I started adding both the uh, size unfinished and the size finished. Now that is not really common. You're going to see it sometimes because other people may have started like I did and sometimes you will just see the unfinished size because you're sewing it and the size of the single block, like a single block, that in a direction is what you're measuring. You know, like you want to be sure it's the correct size. So the patterns, whether they're magazines or books or single patterns or free PDFs, will usually tell you the size of the block before it is put in the quilt. This is called an unfinished size. And you've made the full block until you're measuring it. So it might be 10 and a half or 12 and a half, something like that. And I did that uh, for a long time. Um, and then there were just people who got confused. I have a lot of new quilters who are not used to reading patterns. And so I decided to give you both pieces of information. Here you can see it bigger down here. I decided to give you both pieces of information as a training thing so that you can get your brain locked into the fact that your block when you sew it, sit, sitting by itself, uh, is, I've got to cut that off of there. That's annoying me. It's like, <clears throat> it's hanging on the bottom. So let's say this is eight right now, or eight and a half, let's do that. Let's say this is eight and a half. Then when it's finished, when you put it in the quilt with other blocks, it will be eight because you have to subtract a fourth inch on one side for seam allowance and a fourth inch on the other side for seam allowance. So your block, an eight and a half inch block will always finish at eight in the quilt. Um, you generally, while you're making the block, do not need to know the finished size, right? You don't need that. So if somebody only gives you the finished size, what I find is people will trim it to that, which is wrong, and you make a, and you, you ruin your block. So being sure you understand where you are with things, being sure you understand is important for any pattern you read because there is no like law that says we have to write them a certain way. Anybody can write a pattern in any manner in any way they like. So that means, uh, you know, you will find a lot of different variations on how things are said. Now, if you go to like a book publisher, they will write things in a consistent standard way across all the, um, all the designers. Magazines will write in a consistent standard way for them. 
same thing across all designers. So you will see consistency for magazines and books, um, but uh, and a designer will have their own, but like the way I did write, the way Wendy writes, the way Joanna Figueroa writes, um, they're all going to be slightly different. So that is the difference. You generally are given the size of the block with seam allowances, eight and a half, uh, and then it might tell you what the block size is finished, which would be eight, um, but a lot of times you don't get that number. Okay, so I hope that helps those of you who are new to reading patterns and understanding patterns. Okay, and the, let's see, the last question is from Angelica uh, here at YouTube. And when I did this, when I was showing you um, how that I washed the little yarn afghan with the little granny squares of my great grandmother made, I washed it and I was blocking the, blocking it and I was blowing a fan over it so that I could dry it faster. She wanted to know why can't I just go hang it on the clothesline and let it dry in nature? Um, because she wants to uh, conserve energy or you know worry about the climate. And you, you can't hang wool blocks like that when they're soaking, when they're heavy with water and weight on a clothesline because they will stretch. They will just pull out of form, out of shape, and they will deform and become very, un they will become unattractive. They will not be what you want. They might actually stress the joint points of that hand stitching to, you know, put the blocks together. Um, so you do not want to hang a wet wool yarn afghan on a clothesline. You might have the same problem with quilts too, because the cotton might get a little deformed if you're hanging on the clothesline. If you've hung something and then now you've got the points where you hung it, you know, like you hang it and then it's got these points that come up, that's all from the weight of that heavy, you know, the water's dripping down to the bottom, that's adding extra weight. So be careful how you, ha when you hang wet textiles and be sure you sort of understand what you're doing and why you want to do it. Have you hung a shirt on a clothes hanger to dry and then you have points sticking out? The textiles take on the shape of what's going on. You know, if it's on a structure or the weight of the water pulling on it. So you want to be really careful. It, when you're working with wool yarns, that's, you know, like that's often called blocking. You can block quilts in the same way. I didn't have to blow a fan on it. I could have just let it dry it naturally on my floor. It already took 24 hours for that little piece to dry. So that was blowing a fan on it for a couple of hours. Um, it would take a longer for it to dry without me doing that. It's very humid right now. And so it's the, the dampness just hangs in the air. Okay, so I hope that helps uh, explain what I was doing and why I was doing, because there's actually a purpose and a reason. All right, my friend. So you're gonna do a tidy up. If you have a bin like me, where you basically are done with part of the project, then go and put it in its new, where it should be, put it away. So that will get you uh, just sort of freed up space and it just doesn't clutter up and get in the way. All right, my friend, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.